Okay, so hot on the heels of the review video, which has gone live on YouTube about 30 minutes ago now, I'm going to start making some modifications to this printer. Um, I'm going to add the second nozzle kit for it, second extruder and second nozzle. Um, I purchased that from Reichelt. I was not sent that for free. Um, I'm going to add on the RGB LED lighting kit for it and see what that can do for me. That wasn't available from Reichelt, so uh, bought that from somewhere else. I'm going to add in this wiring tidy thing that I printed out that was on Thingiverse. And because she absolutely refuses to move off the desk because I cleared a bit of desk space, I'm rather tempted to install this cap. Okay, so I've slowed down this footage enough so that you'll be able to keep up with me. Um, normally I go a lot faster than this, but I find it leaves a bit of motion blur. So, um, oh, damn, I've just given away my secret identity as the Flash. Uh, no, no, I've sped up this video for you, um, so it's not quite so dull. So um, what I'm doing here is just assembling the uh, additional hot end and the extruder for it. Um, the instructions that Velleman provide for this are very detailed and the photos they give are pretty much identical to what you're seeing here. So you have to measure a piece of the PTFE tube, fit it in the thing, put all the screws in, put the uh, thermistor through the heat block and the heater cartridge in there, um, wind the wires in, push it all together. Some more screws in. Um, with this kit everything comes as components and then here I'm just fitting the hot end into the print head up at the top. You have to remove a couple of the screws that are already in there because the fan mount screws into the same parts. Um, there's some little black spacer washers that go in, insulating washers for electrical reasons or some such. Um, the hot end screws into place and um, that's just the little hose connector fitting that the PTFE tube pushes into there and then you tidy up the wires a bit and screw those into the terminals. The fan wires go into the middle two terminals and the heater cartridge goes into the front two terminals. So once the hot end's in, we then put the extruder pieces into place. Um, see, my cat is absolutely determined not to move off this desk no matter what. She's uh, very much my uh, witch's familiar and wants to be wherever I am all the time. So again, the extruder goes together fairly straightforwardly. I think there's five screws all together in it, um, a spring-loaded mechanism. Um, they're, they're quite uh, fiddly on getting the exact placement of that drive wheel 19.5 millimeters off the body of the thing uh, which means that when you install the plastic parts on the outside the filament lines up properly so the extruder just goes on with one screw at the bottom to kind of align things two screws at the top for a bit of structural support and then the screw that goes in down at the bottom holds the uh, filament wheel and the little bearing and the spring loaded mechanism that is a real real pain to get into place um, it's one of those things where you need three hands, two to hold it, one to line the screw up, another one to actually drive it in. But there we go, we're in and we have to install the stepper motor driver on the underneath of the board which comes in the extra add-on kit. And the final bit is to install the PTFE tube between the extruder and the hot end. Um, they say you want exactly 700 millimetres of that tube, so I'm sure a bit of variation wouldn't matter too much. So with that, the extruder's in, and now we're on to installing the LED lighting kit. Um, very detailed instructions for this take you through how it all plugs together, where you need to solder bits on. Um, I printed off the instructions so I could have an easier time when soldering it. 
Instructions are very detailed. Solder these three resistors in. Solder three Zener diodes into place. Um, quite, quite enjoyable little bit. I do like a bit of soldering. Not too painful at all. As long as you went bend the wires correctly, which I'm the dab hand at. And thanks to the power of video editing, you didn't see all the times I got it wrong. Now I use a ridiculously fine solder, it's 0.38mm diameter and I thought it was a good idea when I got it but you just have to feed so much of it onto the joint that uh, it's a real pain to work with. So there's the three MOSFETs that go on that control the switching on and off of the red, green and blue respectively of the LED strips. Um, trim all the ends off, tidy up my bad solder joints, add on the screw terminals, bit more soldering. And then I'll done the uh, six pin headers. Check the soldering again, jobs are good. Un. And then step nine in the instructions, which is uh, ju just one little figure. Says now solder this header onto the motherboard, which is of course screwed to the underside of the printer having already been wired in. Um, the fact this is just one step in the instructions is like, what? How? That, that's ridiculous. Why didn't they just put the header in on the first place? And getting this motherboard's a pain because you need to access the screw heads on the inside of the printer and the nuts on the outside of the printer. So I've just got it popped up on the uh, charger for my old drill there. Um, sadly, I don't have my Makita tools anymore. Someone uh, broke into my shed and stole just the Makita gear. And now uh, that's me putting the new firmware on for the uh, dual extruder version. I have since noticed um, the Vertex uses Marlin 1.04 firmware, which Velleman modified for this printer. The new Marlin 1.1 firmware actually supports this printer out of the box apart from the LED modules. So I'm going to have a look at that firmware sometime in the future, see if I can work out how to actually get it up and working on this printer and maybe have a go at tweaking the firmware so it'll support the LED strips again. So uh, just screwing the power leads back in there. And with that, we should be just about ready. Oh no, we've got to actually install the LED strips. That was just the driver board. So uh, put the little metal clips on, put the double-sided sticky back pads on and then we can drop that into the printer. Oh, after a bit more soldering to connect the uh, white lead with the plug on to the colour-coded leads that go onto the main board. So just thread that up through the frame um, and then stick those strips into place. Um, they just held on with double-sided sticky pads. I didn't think the double-sided sticky pads were a great idea, but they haven't failed in the week or so that this has been attached to my printer, so maybe they'll be all right. Um, I thought longer strips and there from the front menu you can change the LED colours. So now we're ready to try a actual dual extruder print. Um, as you can see I've got a kind of pale blue Velleman PLA lined up on the left on the right hand side and it's white PLA on the left hand side. And for my first print I'm just trying to print two separate objects. Um, these LEDs are actually you can control them from within the G code that Cura produces. So uh, I had a play around with setting up different decode when it switches between the different nozzles to change the LED colours. So when it's on the blue colour, I know it's doing from the right hand side extruder. When it's on the left colour, I know it's from the left hand side extruder. Left colour, purple colour. Okay, a brief interlude from all the time lapse footage, but I'm afraid we're going to be going back to it in a minute. Um, this is my first ever printed dual colour thing and I don't know how well it'll show up on here but I've clearly got an alignment issue between the heads. I think the default in Cura said they were 47.5 millimetres apart but I'm guessing that default was uh, defined by someone who's already modified their printer because I've got gaps and the white and blue don't align up properly. So after aligning the distance between the print heads properly, I can now print out better things. And I know what you're thinking, 
okay, whatever, meh, lol, bleh. So anyway, going to move on from printing in two plastics now, and I'm going to try and give this Innofil soluble filament, I think it's PVA glue or something along those lines, but I'm going to give that a try, and I'm going to crack out the uh, purple PLA that I got, and uh, see if I can print something with soluble support material. So for the first thing I'm going to try and print, I'm going to try and print this Pass the Butter Bot by J Super. This is from Rick and Morty, the TV show, which is very good. Well worth checking out if you haven't seen it. So in Cura, I've just imported the model. And I've set the extrusion so to generate support using Extruder 2. And I've turned on this uh, Enable support, support Interface so it'll generate a proper solid roof on the top of the support. So uh, we'll see how that works out. It says it's going to take 11 hours, so um, time lapse. Print failed very quickly. Um, I couldn't get the PVA to stick on top of the PLA. Um, in fact, I had loads of problems getting this PVA material to work. Um, I had problems with it clogging in the extruder. It seemed not to want to stick to anything at all. It was a real painful material to work with. So this time lapse contains lots and lots of failure over and over again. And you can see in this every now and again little red blobs of glue gun glue appear. Um, this is just me trying to dial in the settings for this PVA glue and trying to work out something that'll actually make it stick properly and adhere properly. Trying out different support settings and bed adhesion settings. Just about everything I could possibly think of to actually try and get this thing to work properly. Um, I've got a priming tower there that square block in the corner is the idea is it uh, extrudes a little material there to get everything flowing properly and uh, to kind of make sure that each extruder actually extrudes a bit but after seven or eight attempts at printing out different kind of pretty looking models just decorative things I threw my toys out the cot and uh, came back the next day and this is it trying to print a, a fan mount to move the bottom of fan on the printer down to underneath and hopefully cut down on the noise a bit. Um, this is after three or four days of playing around with the PVA to find settings that actually appear to work and apart from the support tower on the left hand side needing occasional help from the glue gun I did actually finally get my first successful print. Hooray! My goodness finally a print that made it all the way to the end with a bit of help from the glue gun along the way for that support tower. So uh, I can finally show you something dissolving in water. So I'm going to get that off the build plate and uh, dunk it in some tepid water and we'll see what happens. Okay, I'm going to remove as much of this uh, PVA as I can by hand because there's no point having to dissolve more than we need to. And that doesn't actually leave a whole lot to dissolve. Most of that's broken away quite cleanly, so there's just a couple of bits in those holes. So we'll stick that in the warm water. Okay, so I got a bit bored waiting for that in the end and went and gave it a quick rinse under the hot tap for a couple of minutes. And that's now beautifully cleaned up. And in case you're wondering what it is, it's an alternative fan mount for the cooling fan on this Vertex printer. And uh, after all the failures I was getting with that PVA earlier on, I actually thought I was expecting failure, so I also got the Ultimaker to do one. But um, I think you can see the difference there, that uh, this one I've still got to tidy up all the support material if it'll come out of the hole. This was printed a different way up to increase its chances. And this one's ready to go. So I'm not sure which one I'll end up fitting. Kind of like the black, but less hassle. Okay folks, I think I'm going to call time for this video. Um, you may get to experience it all in about 15-16 minutes or something, but this does actually represent seven, eight days of playing around with this and trying to print using this Innofil soluble PVA filament, which was uh, a lot more difficult to get working right than I thought it was, though I think I've worked out a reasonable set of settings now that let me uh, print things like this out. Thank you Kat. Um, coming up in the next video I'm going to be working out some solution for getting one of these heated beds attached to the printer. I think I've ordered all the bits I think I'm going to need so I'll spend the next week working on that 
All that remains for me to say is a big thank you to these people, Reichelt, who sent me this printer. Um, if you're into 3D printing, electronics, enclosures, switches, buttons, all sorts of things, well worth checking out their website. Um, in particular, they seem to have a special offer on at the moment on this Velleman PLA filament. So if you're in the market for some PLA, give their website a check. Uh, there's links down in the description down there somewhere. Um, give them a try. You've got nothing to lose by having a look. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video and uh, thanks for watching and join me next time for some more mods. Cheers! <laughs>